If you've written code that looks like this, or maybe like this, then chances are you're actually using state incorrectly and storing too much global state and not enough local state. Now there's always times for global state, but local state is almost always better. And in this video, I wanna talk about how you can refactor your code to utilize local state and when maybe doing that is not the right idea. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And here we have a very simple project that exemplifies how this works. So here I have a counter component and I'm passing in my count variable as well as my set count variable. And inside of that counter component, all I'm doing is just when I click the plus and minus button, I increment or decrement my count and then I render it out. And as you can see here, this is working just fine. This is essentially the very first project anybody builds in React and it's super straightforward, but there's one difference in our project versus most other people's project. And that's that you'll notice none of the state for counting is inside of our counter component. Instead, we put all of it inside this app.js file. As you can see here, this is where we have our state line right here. And we're just passing that state information into our counter. And everything works, so you may think that this is fine, but the problem with this is that you're storing this count state globally, or at least you're not storing it as locally as possible. You're storing it in a parent or a parent of a parent, and then passing it down to the component where that state is actually needed. Now, sometimes this is fine when you have state that's shared across lots of components, but in our case, no other component cares about this count state except for our counter, so it would make more sense for us to move this code into our actual counter here, removing these different props like this. Let's just clean that up a little bit. And then inside of our app, we just don't pass anything in here. This right here is going to work exactly the same. I just need to make sure I import use state. There we go. So now you can see our counter is working exactly the same as it did before, but the big difference is all of our state is local inside this counter component, which means if we need to have another counter on a different page, let's just say we want to add a second one inside of here, well, we could just copy that counter down. So let me just do that real quick. Copy that inside there paste another one down there. And now you can see we have two independent counters and we didn't need to worry about storing all the extra state for that outside in our app with two different state variables. All of it is inside the counter and it takes care of all of its own state. And that makes working with your code much cleaner. But obviously this example is pretty straightforward and more than likely this is how you probably already would write this component. So let's look at a little bit more complex of an example where you're most likely doing this wrong. So if we come over here, I have this second app.js file and I have this login form right here. And if we just come in here and I just comment in app two, you can now see on this right-hand side, we have an email, a password and a submit button for our form. So let's look exactly what is happening in our app two. We have all of our state information being stored. So we have our form state right here for our email, our password. We have this you know, update method, which we can just pass in some new information to update the information. We have an on submit. This would be like where we you know, go fetch off to an API to submit this data. And then we're rendering out our login form where we pass in that data, the update method we created, and this submit method. Then inside of that form, we're just taking all that information in. If we just scroll down here, you can see we have a form where we, when we submit, we just call that on submit function. And we have both of our inputs where we have our data, which is just an email and password, and we have the on change, which is hooked up. So essentially we just have a normal form. I can type in here, type in here, click submit. And if I just make sure that this is an email field, just like that, and I click submit, if I inspect my console, you'll see that it just prints out the object that has my email and my password. Really super straightforward. And you may think that this is already correctly done, but you can actually make this a little bit better by removing all of this state that's in your app component and instead moving that state locally where it's actually used. One thing you'll notice about this is we don't actually care about live updates to our email and password value. We only care about our value when we submit our form. And that means we don't care about tracking the state of those variables as we change them. Because as I type inside of here, React is actually re-rendering this password field every single time I type a new letter. So that way I have access to that inside this form data right here. But again, I don't actually need that data until I submit. So instead what I wanna do is I wanna remove all of this state, push it as locally as possible, and make it so that I only actually access that data in this on submit right here. So to do that, let's go into our login form and see what we can do. First of all, I don't care about what the live update values are, so I can get rid of this value and this on change. I don't actually need these anymore. Instead, what I can do is I can just do a simple ref. I we'll have an email ref right here, and we'll have a ref down below that for our password. So this will be our password ref, whoops, password ref. And we'll just come in here and say const email ref equals use ref. Make sure I import that. We'll do the exact same thing for our password. 
So just by doing this, we can still use our form as we did before by typing inside of it, but I don't actually have access to any of that information anywhere else. It's just inside of these refs right here. And my component does not re-render every single time I type. So it's a small performance gain right there. Let's just remove this other stuff because we're only passing it on submit. And now let's go back into here. We know that we no longer have to worry about state, so we can get rid of all that state stuff. We still have our on submit, but how do we get the data out of it? Well, we can just pass our data along inside of our on submit. So to do that, we can just come in here and we can say we're going to pass in an email and we're going to pass in a password. Let's just actually just call this form data. That's fine. Form data. And this will be form data, just like that. So now we just have our data being passed along. So inside of here, when we call on submit, we can just pass in our email, which is our email ref dot current dot value. And we can do the same thing for our password, which is our password ref dot current dot value. So now if I save this and I type in some information for my email, type it in for my password, and if I just look at my console real quick before I click submit, clear everything out and I click submit, make sure that this is an email, you can see right here it's getting our email and our password being sent along. And the nice thing is not only did we make all of our state as local as possible, we actually removed the need for any state at all by doing this. So our app component has gotten you know, significantly simpler. All we have is an on submit, that's it. Our login form also got simpler because we didn't need to worry about updating the state. All we need to do is just keep track of two refs and that's it. Essentially what I like to do when I'm trying to determine if my state is more global than it needs to be is I look at that state and I say, okay, let's say when we had our state here, I look at it and I go, is this state currently being used in this component? And in our example, the state was not really being used in the component. It was only being used in this on submit, which was triggered from a different component. So I knew immediately, okay, this information is not actually used anywhere in this component at all. So when that happens, I know that I can take that state and I can most likely move it more locally to where it's actually used. In our case, we could take it out of here and move it into this login form right here. But there's one issue with this approach when you try to make state as local as possible, because you may have a scenario where your app component doesn't use the state, but it passes it to multiple components. Here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. I have a blog article on this topic, and this is one of the examples in there. And you'll see here that we have an app component, which has a to-dos container, and inside of that we have a to-do list and a to-do count. And here's kind of an example of what that code would look like. You can see we have our state for our to-dos, and we pass that into both our list and our count component. Now this is an example where our to-dos container does not use this to-do information at all. You can see nowhere in this component are we using that state information, but we are passing it along to multiple different components. So we have multiple children that rely on this information. And in that case, we need to make the state as local as possible. And in our scenario, putting it inside the to-dos container is as local as we can get it because now we need two components that have that exact same data. And this is the closest parent for both of those two components. If we put this state in our app, it would not be as local as possible because this to-dos container is the only child of app that needs this data, so it'd be best to move it inside of here as we have done in this example right here. So this is just a scenario when you need to share state between multiple components that are all related to each other. Sometimes you need to store it inside of a parent component in order to do that. Another example you may be thinking of when it comes to sharing state between multiple components is context. So let me pull over just another example here. This is an example from a fairly complex code base, but what I have right here is I have a context. And this context has a bunch of information. As you can see, all this information is for authentication. So we have things like the current user, we have things like login, sign up, log out. All of that information for the user is stored inside of here and is stored inside of this context. And then this user information is useful everywhere in my entire application. So if I come to my app.tsx, because this is TypeScript, you can see I'm wrapping my entire application in this auth provider. This right here just wraps my entire application. So this is really important because if you have data that needs to be used literally everywhere, data that is actually global to your application, generally context is the best way to store that. And you're just gonna wrap your entire application in like your index.js file or in like your app TSX in this case, because I'm doing a Next.js application. A lot of people make mistakes with context though, where they actually use global context in scenarios where they don't actually need it. I'm gonna pull over just another example here. This is actually from a video I've done on the channel. I'll link it in the cards and description for you. It's like a comment based video. But essentially in this video, we have blog posts and those blog posts can have comments. And I have this post context right here, which allows us to have a context for everything related to one individual blog post. As you can see, we have our post as well as all the information for the comments on that post. 
Now you'll notice in my app here, I'm not wrapping my entire application inside of this post provider. Instead, the only part of my application that cares about this data is my post. So I'm wrapping this post component inside of my context. So now all of the children of this post component, which there's quite a few of, have access to the data inside of that context. But the other routes my application, for example, the list of posts and any other things in my application don't have to worry about that global context completing their space essentially. Because if I took this post provider, I could move it and wrap my entire application in it if I really wanted to. And this is still going to work just fine. But again, the problem you'll run into is now you have this global state that's in places where it doesn't need to be. This post list does not need access to this provider and anything else, again, does not need access to it. So when you're using context, try to make them as local as possible. If it's only used in a small part of your application, wrap just that small part of your application in the context to make sure that you don't overly use all of this global information with your context. Contexts are super powerful, but they can also be a huge burden if you put too much inside of them and make them all global. This is a fairly advanced React concept, but hopefully these tips were able to help you actually implement it into your own projects. If you want to see an example of me implementing this, I'll have it linked over here, as well as an example of how you can clean up your code with different folder structures that'll also be linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.